All right, welcome back. I know that COVID-19 has taken the attention of uh, the world, but um, something still kills a lot of Africans by the uh, hundreds of thousands, and it's malaria. And um, according to a report released at the end of last year, there were 220. 8 million cases of malaria in 2018 alone and about 25 percent of that are from nigeria um so we just show you that malaria is still a probably the deadliest disease on the continent by by mile for a lot of people and um that's saying that at least 405,000 people died of malaria in 2018 405,000 people died of malaria in, in 2018 across the world so um there's a lot that still happens and I, a lot of people are worried because it is a major killer it is a major disease on the continent and in the country um but the coronavirus seems to have taken attention away from a lot of these other ailments that afflict Nigerians and Africans and people across the world. And I'm joined now by Pedro Alonso, who is the director of the World Health Organization Global Malaria Programs. Um, I, if you can hear me, I don't know. Um, how has the, the shifted attention now from the coronavirus, sorry, from malaria to the coronavirus or COVID-19 affected uh, some of the programs you're running with malaria, especially on the African continent? I hope you can hear me well. Yes, I can. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to uh, be with you today. Um, particularly important, this being Nigeria and uh, and, and and being Africa. Um, COVID nineteen is a um, uh, is a public health emergency, um, as declared by the World Health Organization, which is causing major disruption and disease and death across large parts of the world. So it's all too right that we should pay significant attention to them. And we should be able to do so while combining it with the always needed attention to the big killers, uh, particularly the ones affecting um, um, Africa. And as you rightly said, in Africa every year, close to 400,000 people die of malaria. Every year there's close to 200 million cases of malaria in, in Africa, and about a, a quarter of them take place in Nigeria alone. And so our purpose must be to contain uh, COVID-19 while retaining our continuous effort to control and eventually eliminate malaria. Yeah. If, um, if we just do COVID-19 and that results in, in um, uh, losing the focus, uh, not being able to deploy our insecticide-treated bed nets or our drugs or antimalarial medicines for the prevention of malaria in children or in pregnant women, or it disrupts the access to diagnosis and treatment, we could be facing a major disaster. Yeah, I know a lot of people, especially on the continent, are seeing all the concerted efforts uh, by scientists and research agencies across the world and even governments, you know, to battle COVID-19 and get a vaccine and get treatments and all of that. But malaria has been around for way much longer and kills, like I said, in the hundreds of thousands. And um, people are still wondering, why don't we have a vaccine yet? Why is malaria still this much of a problem? Why are we still at this point where the conversation is, let's manage it as against, let's let's sort of eradicate it? What, what, what's holding us back? My dear friend, uh, that's, uh, that's, um, that's a hard and an incredibly important question. I think there are several elements. Number one is um, when we're dealing with malaria, we're dealing with a very complex parasite, biologically very complex, um, uh, in which there are still many elements of its biology and its response uh, by the human body when encountering it that we still don't entirely understand. So um, COVID-19 is a virus, and I will not underestimate its importance, but viruses are biologically relatively simple organisms um, to which I am pretty sure a vaccine will be developed uh, within months uh, or, 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 or a year. In the next scale is what we call bacteria often causing pneumonias or, or others. Those are harder organisms, but we can still develop uh, vaccines. So we have vaccines for pneumococci that cause pneumonias and meningitis um, and others. The third category is, is our, our, are the parasites. And those are very, very complex organisms. The first, the virus are like bicycles. The uh, bacteria are like 
nice cars, parasites are this like the space shuttle. So the complexity of the organism is really very different. So that's that's reason number one. Reason number two, let's be clear. Um, malaria affects uh, often some of the more um, disfavored communities. Um, it does not affect any more Europe or the US. Um, and so the interest, the effort in terms of developing drugs, vaccines is is often not there. And uh, here's where we look forward to also the African scientific community, which is becoming really strong. And in Nigeria, you have great examples of this, must step forward. I think we will uh, eventually defeat malaria, and this will require new tools, including a vaccine, of which there is one currently being deployed in pilot implementation programs. Just last year, 250,000 African children were already immunized with this vaccine, the first one to have received a, a positive opinion by a stringent regulatory authority. We will need more financial resources and, um, and we will need country leadership. If we have the, if we better use the tools we have, if we develop new ones and we have real country leadership and ownership of the problem, including the financial resources, we will eventually win this battle. In one minute or two minutes, as quickly as you can. Um, some of the poorest countries of the world seem to be the ones affected by malaria. And um, now there's the COVID-19 to cope with as well. A country like Nigeria, how do we cope with malaria being a problem already and now the COVID-19? Some people say even the symptoms sometimes are similar, so there's some confusion even sometimes to report what you're going through. How does a country like Nigeria cope in times like this? So you have to, you have to be able to deploy um, the measures recommended by the World Health Organization and by the Nigerian government in terms of uh, protecting the health workforce, social distancing, having tests available, identifying quickly cases, isolating them. That's the standard COVID response. In terms of malaria, go on doing your planned campaigns of bed nets, of indoor residual spraying, of anti-malarials. We can do both things together in a safe way. We have issued specific guidance that shows how we can continue doing our malaria work, not stepping back while doing so in a COVID effective environment. Failure to do so could actually multiply by two the number of deaths we, we, we would otherwise get from malaria this year. Thank you very much, Pedro, for the insight. And we look forward to better news as we go in the months and years ahead. And thanks for all the good work you do at the World Health Organization. No, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's uh, your leadership that helps us move forward. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for the show today. Like I always say, you can follow the conversation on Twitter at Robin Minds. Now is the handle. Please use the hashtag Robin Minds to share your messages with us. Please stay home. Stay safe. Most importantly, obey the government. If they say stay home, please stay home. And obey the experts. They know what, at least much better than us, what's going on and just stay alive. We need everybody to go through this and we will be defeated definitely. My name is Ebuka Obiuchendu and I'll see you next Sunday.